Hello and thank you for joining us on this Monday afternoon. I'm Journey Taylor and here's a look at some of the top stories we're following today. Powerful storms in Tennessee killed at least six people after tearing through the central region of the state. Now Tennessee's governor has declared a state of emergency. Plus two years after his death, the family of Terrence Caffey honored him by giving back to the less fortunate in little than five minutes. And in Bethlehem, churches are canceling celebrations in solidarity with Palestinians, transforming the traditional manger scene into a rubble filled manger. But first we have a look at weather. Meteorologist Simone Thomas is in the building for meteorologist Scott or Nathan, it doesn't matter which one. <laughs> All right, you're here with us now. Tell us a little bit more about what we're expecting on this Monday. Listen, we woke up to this morning <laughs> to some very cold conditions. Everyone across the state woke up to sub freezing temperatures this morning. Believe it or not, Little Rock was the warmest place to wake up, just barely below freezing with a low of 31 this morning. Hot Springs got as low as 27. Arkadelphia got all the way down to 23 this morning. At this point in the day, we're seeing temperatures generally in the 50s with clear skies. This is visible satellite. We don't have any clouds in the sky. That'll be the main story throughout today. Sunny conditions as we see temperatures climb to more of the middle to upper 30s. I have a look at how that rest of the week is looking to shape up as we head on later on into the show. All right, Simone. Well, it was a horrific weekend of tornadoes in Tennessee where six people were killed and an entire neighborhoods were wiped out. Meanwhile, Bahorquez reports from Nashville where the state's governor has declared a state of emergency. Oh my God. In Nashville, Tennessee, videos posted to social media show the intense wind. Oh my God. And the night sky lit up from exploding electrical equipment. In just minutes, powerful tornadoes shredded homes in Middle Tennessee. The city of Clarksville was hardest hit, where the National Weather Service says an EF3 tornado reached max wind speeds of 150 miles per hour. Yet closer to Nashville, an EF2 tornado left its mark as it sent mobile homes airborne at this trailer park. Firefighters believe that's how 31-year-old mother Floridima Perez and her two-year-old son Anthony Mendez were killed. One of the firemen, I said, did they find the baby? And they said, yes, they couldn't find it because she was holding it, covering it, protecting it. Another trailer belonged to 37-year-old father, Joseph Dalton, who died from his injuries. I'm thankful that we're all alive, but what hurts me more than anything is he lost his life last night. The National Weather Service reported at least six tornado tracks. Officials say at least 22 structures were destroyed and more than 80 people were injured. I hope nobody was in those houses. Tennessee Governor Bill Lee toured the damage Sunday. There are victims whose lives are devastated and will never be the same. Tanya Osborne says she's lucky she wasn't home when her house was hit. I would have been in the closet that's now been sucked out. Now she's left with very little. My whole life has been reduced to several garbage bags and what I can get in them and what I could salvage. The local electrical company says there was extensive damage to some of its substations, so some areas may not have power fully restored, possibly for weeks. Clarksville Montgomery County schools will be closed today and tomorrow as officials continue to assess damage to campuses there. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Nashville. And a THV 11 update after five years, a 2018 murder case is now closed. On Friday, a jury found Timothy Clevenger guilty of first degree murder for killing, killing his wife, Meg, five years ago. Clevenger was originally arrested a few weeks after his wife was killed. Pulaski County Prosecutor Will Jones says the pandemic contributed to the delay of the verdict. He says it took the jury just seven minutes to decide on a life sentence. And Little Rock police are still searching for a suspect in a fatal shooting. Just before 11 o'clock Friday night, officers got a shots fire call from 27th Street. That's less than half a mile north of Asher Avenue. 34 year old Brad Curry was taken to the hospital but died early Saturday morning. LRPD is searching for the person responsible and they're now considering the case a murder investigation. This is the city's 57th known homicide of the year. 
Two years ago, an Arkansas man, Terrence Caffey, died in police cu custody. Now his family is honoring his memory by giving back to the less fortunate in Little Rock. THB 11's Brooke Buckner shows us how they're serving their community. On Sunday, Terrence Caffey's family is still calling for accountability two years after his death. On December 10th, 2021, Caffey died after going into medical distress during his arrest by Little Rock Police. Last fall, law enforcement released body camera video and the Pulaski County prosecutor ruled the officers involved would not face criminal charges. Caffey's family is now honoring his life through helping others. Putting smiles on their faces is what's hip us, hipping us right. to move and go on. They set up shop in front of Value Foods on Colonel Glen, and people walked away with more than just smiles. We just want to help the community out here. It's cold. Give back to them. We have sleeping bags, um, gloves, clothes, shoes, everything they would need to sleep out here in the cold. Cappy's aunt and sister tell me this is what Terrence would have wanted. Terrence had a passion for helping the homeless people, helping the underprivileged. He always rooted for the underdog. And so this was one of his passions. And so to keep his memory alive, we're coming out here and we're going to do what he would have wanted to do. And this isn't the last giveaway. They hope to do this at least a couple times a month. When we're trying to get this together and we're saying, oh, we don't have this, we don't have that. It's his spirit, his drive, his tenacity that we get from him to say, yes, we can. We're going to do it and we just keep on. At the end of the day, they say they're looking for accountability. We're going to believe that God is in control of that. He's going to work it out. So what we're going to do is what we need to do on our end. And this is some of it. In Little Rock, Brooke Buckner, THV 11 News. Well, you can find updates for future giveaways, events on the family's Facebook page for Terrence Caffey. We have that linked on our website at THV11.com. Well, Americans are feeling better about inflation. A consumer sentiment survey from the University of Michigan finds inflation expectations have reached their lowest level in more than two years. The report dropped the same day that the Labor Department reported U.S. employers added 199,000 jobs in November. The unemployment rate also fell, according to the report. The Fed will consider those numbers when it meets this week to decide its next move on interest rates. The University of Pennsylvania's president has agreed to step down. She's one of three university leaders bashed by critics for their testimony to Congress last week about hate speech. Liz McGill resigned Saturday after days of criticism and pressure from donors, alumni and Jewish community members following McGill's comments in a congressional hearing on campus anti-Semitism. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. This is the easiest question to answer yes, Ms. McGill. Well, shortly after McGill's announcement, Congresswoman Elise Stefanik posted one down, two to go, referencing Harvard and MIT, which face similar lines of questioning. McGill made no mention of the exchange in her resignation letter Saturday, but said, quote, it has been my privilege to serve as president of this remarkable institution, end quote. Well, the University of Arkansas has placed sanctions on a fraternity following a hazing investigation. The Pi Kappa Alpha fraternity, also known as Pike, will be removed from its residence on Arkansas Avenue at the end of the current semester. The move comes after a video showing an initiation ritual spread on social media. Now we won't show it here, but we're told that it depicts members beating pledges with a wooden spoon or a paddle. Last month, the national headquarters of Pi Kappa Alpha suspended the Fayetteville chapter. It's eligible to be reinstated in two years. A cloud of conflict is hanging over this holiday season in the Holy Land. Festivities in Bethlehem are taking a back seat as a war between Israel and Hamas rages in Gaza. CBS's Ian Lee reports. Christmas is canceled in Bethlehem, at least the celebrations. This is the worst Christmas ever. Bethlehem is shut down for Christmas. No Christmas tree, no joy, no Christmas spirit. The Christmas spirit destroyed by the war in Gaza. Roughly 18,000 Palestinians have been killed according to the Hamas-run Ministry of Health. Cities reduced to rubble, 
reflected in this manger for baby Jesus at Bethlehem's Lutheran Church. It's impossible to celebrate while our people in Gaza are going through a genocide when children are being uh, massacred in such a brutal manner. Before the war, hotels in Bethlehem were overbooked, but tourism has plummeted after Hamas's murderous October 7th attack, leaving hotels and shops empty. This is Christmas time where Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So for us, this time is really very difficult. The spot where Christians believe Jesus was born at the Church of the Nativity is also empty. Crowds of pilgrims choosing to celebrate this Christmas at home. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. And the scale back Christmas doesn't mean all festivities won't go forward. Churches still plan to hold services over this holiday season. Coming up, we take a look at how one football player is not only defying the odds, but also inspiring his fellow teammates and community. And we've got beautiful sunny skies out there today. Just how long will it stay this sunny? I'll have that answer for you coming up right after this break.